Good morning, everyone, and welcome to yet another action-packed day in Medikwe Game Reserve. It is actually drizzling a little bit here, but very, very lightly, more so spitting, I would say. So I don't quite know what's in, sure for, in store sorry, for the afternoon. But anyway, welcome aboard your live safari. My name is Lauren and I do have Rian on camera. And we are going to sit and spend some time here, of course, because there's a lot happening. This carcass has been going on for days. And you can see we've got the hyenas, the jackals, the vultures are not around, but I'm sure they will be, and there is less and less of this carcass. I feel like I'm sitting watching a soap opera. <laughs> wow, we're going for the leg. <laughs> and we've just been watching this, I can't stop watching this. No organism will Every organism is adapted to their environment. Although nothing in nature is static, change is the only constant, really. Everything's constantly changing. It may not be visible or obvious immediately. It could be subtle changes. Everything in nature is in a constant state of flux, but the animals adapt to that. Adaptation is really survival. And a hyena is, a fantastic hunter but also an incredible scavenger and when I say an incredible scavenger I mean the life of a scavenger I don't think is given the is this hyena eating the hoof oh my goodness wow okay I'm gonna have to retract everything I said earlier I really didn't think it was gonna go for the hoof like that Wow. I mean, I didn't know that hyenas eat everything, but I'm still surprised. Wow. Okay, so an answer to that question from the Sunrise Safari. Yes, they do eat hooves. <laughs> But yes, what I was saying is that animals must be able to adapt to the constant changes and live in that constant state of flux in a natural world. And hyenas are epic hunters. They are. I've watched them hunt. It's incredible. They hunt via coursing in great numbers and it's amazing to watch. It's, it's also horrible to watch, but the coordination and the power of the animals is amazing to watch. And they do also scavenge and the scavenging lifestyle is not easy. There's danger involved in this sort of lifestyle. So myself and Morgan, we've sort of been adventuring in a totally different area to where we normally go. And we've come across this beautiful small group of, uh, of elant antelope. How many are there? There's six over there. And they're pretty much mixed here. There's a couple of bulls and a couple of females as well. They're still quite young, these elant. I'm not sure how long they've been here exactly, but I remember when I used to guide out here in Amakala um, for the three years, three and a half years, um, we often noticed that there were Irland out in this open section over here. So, yeah, it seems like they've probably been here for quite some time. Usually there's uh, also loads of red heart of east out here and big groups of impala as well, but I haven't seen them just yet. Uh, just looking closely at them, they actually look like all females to me. Yeah, there's more on the top of the, the dune, yeah. Uh, it's a bit too far, but there are some more on top of the dune. They're all just waiting for the sun, and they're sitting there patiently, just waiting and waiting. But luckily for them, it wasn't too cold last night, so they were pretty fine. And then this morning, it's a bit cool, but uh, it's nothing like we've had uh, before. We wake up in the morning, and it's just really cold, lots of strong winds. But this morning, it's very, very nice. Ah, there is a bull in there, I see there. Most of the Bushman art that I've seen in South Africa, they often illustrate Irland. And in the hunter-gatherers, depending on sort of which tribes they were in, they all believed that there was something about Irland that was very, very different to the rest of the antelopes, which is quite true. 
And what happens is sometimes, you know, Irland, when they die, um, you actually see tears rolling out of their eyes and dripping down their face. And in some of the African cultures, they believe that their ancestors are inside this animal and uh, they would, would be hunted by the hunter-gatherers. Uh, they believe that this essentially was the jackpot of all jackpots, that this animal was provided to them from their ancestors. And they're also good to see quite clearly the difference between Springbok and Impala. I know people that are new to wildlife and new to safaris um, and have never seen the two can use them. But there we go. Um, both have sort of counter shading colors, but you can see how the Springbok are a little bit more dainty. They're generally more out in the plains and they can run over, you know, faster over much uh, longer distance. Then the impala, which are more uh, comfortable in the thickets, but you will find them uh, out on the plains, but they generally don't stray too far from cover. Um, and they're much better in the thickets. Both male and female have horns with the springbok. Only the male has horns with the impala. They do look similar, but you can see that color difference on the impala. They don't have that black band going down the middle and they're also quite a bit bigger generally than uh, than the springbok the springbok you can tell between the males and females much thicker horns on the rams and the ewes have got much thinner horns I, I always say if you put your two thumbs together you can try it yourself you put your two thumbs together um, those are the males horns if you put your two pinkies together that's quite indicative of the female's horn. So always just think of that when you are trying to identify between a male and a female springbok. Do the thumb and pinky check. So folks, as always, thanks for watching. Thanks to the whole Wild Earth team, especially the guys behind the scenes that um, do most of the work, from the directors to the tech guys, producers, editors, etc., etc. You guys rock. And then the cam ops and uh, me here. This is the easy part, just making the camera move around and talking nonsense. But it's always wonderful to see what's happening across all the different locations. And from here in Okokuyu to Juma, we didn't go there today because there was a little bit too much wind and not very much happening either. But Andrew on Amakala, Lauren in Madikwe, it's been fantastic. So don't forget, later on, there will be the Sunset Safari. My name is Ralph Kirsten. Stick around, but we'll catch you later. Bye for now.